Namo Buddhaya, Namaste. Renunciation, or better understood as giving up, just that. Now, renunciation is a very big part of a monastic's life. We give up the household existence, the household life, to become monks, and we rely then on food being provided for us, clothing, shelter, and our medicine, those four requisites only, and we were allowed to keep eight things. Everything else we had before, we renounce, we give up, and this seems harsh, but our goal is to become free from suffering in this lifetime, or if you like, to attain to enlightenment, Nibbana, where we have extinguished the fires of desire in order to establish a permanent form of contentment. And contentment is the source. Contentment is the cause of happiness. Now, of course, desire for something we don't have, as well as desire to not have something we have, goes against the flow of this cause of contentment. And it is this battle that the monastic has to fight. Fighting our defilements, or kalesas as we may call them, which are just habitual causes of dissatisfaction that we've become accustomed to and developed in our lives. We weren't born as babies. I'll be careful here, I was going to say born as babies addicted to cigarettes or drugs or alcohol, but of course, I mean, unfortunately, there are circumstances where that is a little bit of the case. But that aside, with, with respect and, and, and compassion, um, most of us are fortunate enough to be born as babies, not addicted to any substances, and with very few desires other than the protection of shelter, some warmth of clothing, some food, and of course any required nurturing or medicine needed. And we get offered this by our mothers and our fathers in our family environment, or wherever we're brought up. So these are our basic requirements. The kalesas, the defilements, we build up later on through our conditioned circumstances. They form part of our ego. Back in the sort of 50s, 60s, 70s, I'm not sure when it was, maybe even a little before my time, we had Marlboro Man, and he was this butch, macho cowboy. <laughs> I think he was on a horse in the advert, something like this, with a cigarette, a Marlboro cigarette in his mouth. How cool! A kind of John Wayne strong man with a cigarette. This was a personality, a Sakayaditi, a personality view that one might aspire to. If I smoke this brand of cigarette, I will be like this macho cowboy man on this horse. And you know, this is very much still the case today with our peer groups, our images we see online, on posters, in our environments, all these conditions, pachaya is the Pali word for conditions, conditions that are conducive to the development of these habits, which, whatever we may say, are to some extent or usually unwholesome habits, because they are things we don't need, they are things we want, or they are things we may feel we need because they are a distraction from causes of dissatisfaction in our lives, or pure, what we may just see as unhappiness. And a nice glass of wine and a cigarette or a cigar or smoking a pipe may just make you feel, for a moment, a little distracted from unhappiness, and even to some extent, for a short while, happy and content. So it is very understandable that we have these habits, these defilements, these kalesas, and it is very usual and commonplace. I suppose one of the most popular examples of giving up something, renunciation, um, and something that I think has become a huge industry globally, is 
and we'll use this as an example, giving up cigarettes, smoking. This is very hard to do. I don't deny that. But I have to come from a, a talk, I am talking to you from a place of experience. A long time ago, in fact a long time before I could even consider, contemplate or would even have the notion of becoming a monk, leaving household life and even going to live in a monastery as a lay person, even before they would allow you to go and live in a monastery as a lay person, because the monasteries in my country of this tradition of Theravada um, don't allow smoking and of course they don't allow drinking of alcohol um, or any of other unwholesome habits. So even a long time before I could consider or would, would have even wanted to go and stay in one of these places and probably before I even knew much about these places I had to give up these things and it was partly the giving up of those things that led me to understand the power we have, the control we do have when we experience through meditation and the development of wisdom how we can firstly renounce, firstly let go of the th feeling that we do have control. Because by letting go of the feeling that we have control over these bodies, our desires, our will, if you like, and what's going on around us, our conditions, by letting go of that, you actually develop a whole new power. The power to just observe, watch as desires arise and pass away. As conditions go on, you witness, see, they go away. Now, let's look at this example of giving up smoking. Going back, not sure when, 12, 15 years ago, I used to smoke. It was fairly common in those days. Um, drink alcohol. Um, and I had an ordinary household life. Perhaps a lot of these things I did more than others. I had a very comfortable and enjoyable, as I thought, household life existence. So yes, as much as anyone else, if not more, I did all these things. But I began to practice meditation through a secular teacher, meditation teacher. And it did so happen, it, he was a Theravada Thai forest Buddhist, Buddhist monk in the past, but I didn't know that at the time and he never mentioned this fact. I found this out much later on and he in fact started and went to the same monasteries in Thailand that I've been to. But that's besides the point, he was just teaching meditation, but the Buddhist meditation. Mainly Anapanasati, but there were some other um, meditation objects he employed also. But primarily what, what I felt at home with was watching the breath and meditation. But there came a time when I had to stop drinking and I had some assistance with uh, w which we can all have when giving up anything as I say it's a big global industry if you need to give up drinking need to give up smoking there is help and this is very important to understand I'm not a professional in this aspect of life at all I'm only sharing my experience and my experience was that for, for that there's help, I used help, I needed help perhaps and then eventually found it is up to me. If I want to give something up I have to do it myself. But the bright side is what I found was that there are such huge rewards and it is nothing to do with um, uh, your place in society or your um, place even in the family or your health physically or mentally. No, nothing to do with that. You have immediate rewards and these rewards are so 
overwhelmingly good, you don't want to go back to your habit. What are those rewards? Well, it can almost become an addiction in itself, renunciation, because the feeling of liberation, the feeling of freedom, the feeling of having let go, that you can almost fly. You have superhuman powers because you have broken the chains. The fetters is the word we use, ties to that habit which was controlling you. So not only do we have a Nietzsche, the lack of control of everything around us in our lives externally and even internally with our bodies and our thinking minds, we had also control through habits, calaces, defilements, pulling us back all of the time. The back of our mind, the thought of, oh, when can I sneak out of this meeting to have a cigarette? Or will I get to the pub for a drink before it closes? Or can I get a quick drink in before I go here? All of these controlling our lives with a timetable of strict adherence. You don't know it at the time, but you are so controlled by these habits. It is only when you successfully stop them, you realize and can, if you view correctly, view your newfound freedom from the right point of view, only then do you realize the benefits of having stopped. And they far outweigh the benefits of the habit themselves. Like the, the, the benefits we get through meditation, the experience we can have through samadhi far outweighs the pleasures of worldly life, of entertainment, of music, of relationships, of food. They far outweigh those. We are no longer so attracted to those things of music, of entertainment, of relationships, of food. We become disenchanted by those things because we've discovered something so much better. It's like having something, uh, being able to live in the heavenly realms, you wouldn't want to go back to live in the earthly, worldly realms. Or if you were living in a palace, you wouldn't want to go and live with pigs in a pigsty. You develop a much better uh, thing that replaces what you thought was the best and therefore become disenchanted with that thing you already had on a high pedestal, it no longer is, and it loses its power over you. But this is, of course, just ideas, and it's not a method, but there is a method, and it's a very easy technique method, in that it isn't such a thing. There's no book to read, there's no chemicals or machines to buy, there's nothing to learn, there's nowhere to go, you simply have to stop. And this is how. When I wanted to give up smoking, and I will say, and I'm not saying this is for everybody, I was a heavy smoker. I smoked as much as you could possibly smoke in a day because I was always smoking. So, and this was for many years, 20 plus years of my life. I didn't start till quite late in life, admittedly. I was in my 20s. Some people start very much younger in the country where I'm from, and I was giving up smoking. I'd already given up drinking, so I'd had some practice at this technique, which is a, a self-taught thing. But not really, because I got this, although at the time I didn't know, this was uh, the teachings of the Buddha. I hadn't entered into Buddhism. As I say, I had to do my renunciation, giving up of these kind of habits a long time before I had the opportunity to be in a monastery with Buddhist teachers, monks, staying there, living there as a lay person, and then later on becoming a monk. I had to have, I think, at least five years between giving up my habits and even really being able to practice meditation successfully. 
So it wasn't, oh, I gave up drinking, gave up smoking, became a monk. By far from it was that. No, there's a long gap you need before you can make such an important life-changing decision. Don't ever decide to change your life straight after giving something up because you're just replacing what you've given up by something else you think. And it may then become uh, another defilement or it may become a resented change. You may later re resent it and that could pull you back to your defilement and also destroy what you have found. So this would be a mistake. So you give up something and you have a nice long period of time before you make any life-changing decisions. And of course, practice sila, a samadhi, and panya in whatever form that might take, in whatever lifestyle you are living in. But everything must be done at the right time. So the technique, which isn't a technique, is I was in a situation, I think I was uh, wanting to have a cigarette and I think I had a cigarette, I smoked my cigarette and this was the last one. And I thought, oh, I must give this up. How to do this? Now of course you can go online and there are hundreds of how to give up smoking. There are books and you can buy machines these days, vaping machines, and you can have chewing gum that you can stick on your arm. <laughs> or plaster you stick on your arm and chewing you might want to stick in your mouth. Whatever you're sticking it, wherever it's going, it's all nicotine replacement. Okay, I didn't have any of this. I thought, well, I've got to give up smoking. What do I have to do? And something came to me. I thought, well, let's look at it from a different angle. What don't I have to do? Well, if I want to continue smoking, firstly, I now need to get up, go out of my house, I was in a flat then, out of my front door, down the stairs, go into the uh, high street, it was in a, in a sort of a little town, a little village, walk to the local shop, buy the um, tobacco and the papers, I used to smoke rolling up cigarettes, um, and queue, have a conversation with this person, that person, this is going to take time. Whilst I'm there, I'll probably buy myself a, a, a fizzy drink or something else to drink or something to eat. And that seems really fairly easy. Come back, sit down, excellent. Put the TV on, carry on smoking, no problem. But then what did I have to do to be able to do all those things? Well, I had to go to work today. I had to earn money. And you know, the list is endless. The cause is to be able to buy the cigarettes. It goes back, there's a lot you need to do to be able to actually smoke the cigarette. I thought, now if I don't smoke another cigarette, what do I have to do? Nothing. Ah, now what do I do about being really needing this cigarette and wanting this cigarette? Nothing. Ah, that's not good. I don't feel good about this, I was saying to myself. I still want a cigarette. But I kept with this don't do anything, do nothing, mantra in my head. That if I want to smoke, I've got to do a lot of things. If I don't smoke, I don't have to do anything. I don't even have to consciously give up. I simply have to not do it anymore. And I'd learned through the same method I employed when I stopped drinking alcoholic drinks that I simply had to not do that for another hour, two hours, four, twenty-four, a day. And the next day the same. Not doing something. Now we all think giving up renunciation is doing something. Oh, pat, pat me on the back because I have done this for my New Year's resolution, I gave up smoking. How many of those New Year's resolutions last? Not many, because you have to do it, you have to give up smoking. Or you take something up. Taking something up is different, that has to be done. But renunciation, the beauty in it is you are just not doing, you are giving something up. You are letting go of something. With time, the physical effects 
but more importantly and the harder to fight the harder battle you have is the mental uh, dependence they diminish because other things come along not to replace the habit but other things in your life improve the time you have to do your job and concentrate on that or your social life or your hobbies the money in your pocket increases or in your wallet or in the bank all of these things if you're a practitioner your meditation does improve because it's one less thing to be hindering your progress in meditation one of the first hindrances is sensual desire and these habits form a big part of that now I've mentioned smoking I've mentioned drinking but this can be applied to anything it's the same whatever your defilement if you have any <clears throat> whatever it is you want to give up you may not even consider it as a bad thing you just may want to give it up as an exercise a practice I can assure you from experience it's worth it because the reward is an overwhelming most it's, it's indescribable feeling of liberation and that doesn't take long that cuts in even before the, uh, the the mental dependence and the physical dependence has gone away and it helps push the mental and the physical dependence out of the door it pushes it away the disenchantment with that habit or that thing you were doing is so great there is no room for it in your life anymore and through doing what not through reading anything not through listening to anything not through watching anything not through going to anywhere not through buying anything just through doing no thing nothing including the thing that you are giving up you do nothing so to give up you do nothing including the thing you're trying to give up then you watch the mind and the mind might go crazy at first I've got to do this I need a cigarette I need a drink I need a whatever but it is only the mind churning this over and over again and it will subside something very soon will come along even if you're not a practitioner of meditation something will distract your attention the phone will ring the door will knock something will come on television that's of interest or something else may arise like some hunger okay it's fine at the f at, 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 be careful of it but it's fine okay well I really need a pizza because I can't have a cigarette we'll have a pizza it's less unwholesome than the cigarette and that's okay but what you're not doing is anything about satisfying the desire for the chalice for the defilement itself you're not doing anything about buying the cigarette you're not doing anything about satisfying your need your physical need or your mental dependence on nicotine not even putting chewing gum or a sticker on your body you're not doing that that is just prolonging the agony in a very short time and with me having given up many things previously because it wasn't I mean I, I was seriously intent on getting somewhere with meditation although at the time I didn't know where or what it was and when I gave up certain things I found that liberation that freedom was in itself such a desirous thing everything else paled into insignificance against it so I was kind of looking for things to give up and still am and each time each 15 days when I go to Bangalore for Arupositta as I just have and return I leave here pack my room up clean it put everything in my bowl whatever doesn't fit in my arms bowl that we collect arms food within the morning um, isn't coming with me I give it up leave it behind that's the end of that as if I'm never returning so everything I own in the world is about my person on my journey even though I know I'm coming back in 36 hours it doesn't matter I assume I'm never coming back whether I'm going to England Thailand or Bangalore I have with me my three robes my lower robe my upper robe my 
one over our shoulder, which is our sangati, a double thickness upper row, which is like a blanket or an overcoat. There are three of our requisites. My needle and cotton, that's four. Um, a belt, which holds it all together. Razor and a water filter. These are our needle and cotton, did I say? These are our eight requisites. Our arms bowl, of course, which it all fits in there. Okay. I'll be honest, I don't have a water filter because the water's already filtered here. So really I've only got seven things. And yes, here you say, oh, you've got a mobile phone. And well, these are borrowed. You know, there's certain things in modern day and age. Um, I have also uh, sandals, which um, <laughs> of course they're not borrowed, but I have to have these because walking through hot roads and towns, it's not practical. So, but with other than those exceptions, I really just have these things in the world. And I get immense pleasure each time I walk down the road because I'm going to walk to the bus station and I'm walking there without these encumbrances of things, ownership over things. I'm free like a bird. Like in the Bob Marley song, the little birds talking on the doorstep in the morning, chirping or whatever they do, um, saying whatever they say, um, no worries about a thing because every little thing is going to be all right um, because they just have their wings to fly and that's all they need. They get their food for the day and they'll nest wherever necessarily at night. And this is the monastic life. Now, of course, as lay people just trying to give up smoking or drinking or whatever it is, um, you don't have to give up all your worldly goods. But the feeling of satisfaction and liberation and freedom from each thing you give up when you do is just as great and makes it a possible thing to do, makes it possible because you're not doing anything and therefore you don't replace your habit with a practice which will continue and go on to remind you of your habit. You just stop doing your habit and eventually mentally and physically you forget about it. I never think about smoking now or drinking alcohol or whatever. This even talking about it now, it's as if I'm talking about somebody else. And I did what I've just said, just that, and just that only. And for me, it worked. And if it can work for me, who is, of, I would say, an addictive personality kind of a person, um, if there is such a thing, then it can certainly work for you. So, whatever your habit, whatever your defilement, you just need to not do anything about it anymore. No longer buy the ingredients for whatever it is you need. If you have any dependence physically or even mentally, and it is important you obviously must seek professional help if it's necessary, uh, because you cannot just stop some habits without serious health issues occurring. But that's half, that's a fraction of the battle. There is public help hopefully there for you in that respect. Um, but once you've taken that step, the rest is always down to you. The staying renounced, the staying giving up, given up, is considered the work. But it's really not if you give things up correctly, because it's gone. I don't have a car now, I used to have a nice car I don't have a house now, I used to have a nice house, but I don't miss those things. They've gone. They've been replaced by something far better, freedom in the world. I can live in this beautiful country, I have no bills. I can move to another beautiful country if someone invites me there, where I'll also have no bills. Not because I'm, required, I'm requiring anyone to support me, other than those basic requirements of food, really. That's it, each day, some rice and dal. That's enough, once. Um, because I've renounced the desires for those things that I've become disenchanted with. And when I say I, I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about monastics all over the world. All bhikkhus, bhikkhunis, monks and nuns have done the same. And there wouldn't be so many 
if it wasn't a wonderful thing to do. And there wouldn't be so many people in lay life who have successfully given up drinking or smoking or whatever their habit if they too didn't find it a wonderful thing to do. Now of course there are physical, financial, social reasons for doing it, but put the emphasis on the sheer joy and pleasure you get from the liberation, the freedom, the breaking the chains of your habit. It is like being able to fly. It is a superhuman power. And I'm speaking to you from a place of absolute experience. And if I had something I could give up now today, I would, just to enjoy the process of giving up, renunciation, nekama. Try it and look at it, look at it positively. I am doing nothing about this today. And then it will no longer continue to bother you and it will no longer continue to hold you back, tie you down. Be free and enjoy. Namo Buddha.